Hi, welcome to Wise Guys. This video is a series circuit and it's a practice question. All right, so at this point, pause the video. Pause the video, work through the question, and then restart the video and I will work through the question. Okay. Let's just uh, walk through this thing. We can see that there's four resistors. We have a total voltage of 150, or not 150, 100 volts. And first thing we're going to do is solve for our total resistance. So we add up our resistances here, and since I have three of them in kiloohms, I'm going to just change this one to kiloohms. So it's 0 0.4 eight kilo ohms. So adding these up we have 1.5 kilo ohms plus 0 0.48 kilo ohms plus 2.1 plus 10.3 and when you're adding them up of course you don't have to worry about including kilo ohms in every one you just have to add up the numbers so we have one point oh I just turned oh no I didn't one point five plus zero point four eight plus two point one oh, better slow down eh so one point five plus point four eight plus two point one plus ten point three equals fourteen point three eight Okay, now once you've solved for resistance, here's our total resistance. <coughs> you can solve for the total current. And you use Ohm's law, divide both sides by R, and you end up with current equals voltage over resistance. In this case, it's total voltage over total resistance. Our total voltage is 100 volts. And that's divided by our 14.38 kilohms. So then we take our 100 and divide it by 14.38 exponent 3 equals. You should end up with milliamps. We have 6. Point, let's go with 6.954. Yeah, we'll do that. So 6.954 milliamps. And the whole reason of having this is it just makes our, or these extra digits here, it just makes our final answer more, more correct. So there's our current. <coughs> I total 6.954 milliamps. All right. Now, sorry, my paper's moving all over the place here. Now, normally, what I do is I save my current in the memory. That way, I don't have to keep going to it all the time. So, the next piece we're going to solve for is the voltage across each resistor. So, if we solve for the voltage across resistor 1, I'm going to use Ohm's law, so current times resistance, and that's the total current, and again, the current is running through every single resistor. It's the same current, it doesn't change. Just like water running through a river, and this river doesn't have any tributaries. <coughs> so, and this is our total current that's running through here. So, I total times R1, which is 1. So let's just put R1 here, which is 6.95, let's go with 95 milliamps times 1.5 kilo ohms, which equals, got that, and we're multiplying it by 1.5 exponent 3 equals 
10.43 volts. Okay, second voltage. Again, total current, because that's the current that's running through this resistor, <coughs> times R2. 6.95 milliamps times 0 0.48 kiloohms and the truth is you could just put it in as 480 ohms it doesn't matter as long as you have that saved you'd be fine so let's grab our current again so we go recall memory there's our current multiplied by let's actually just do it let's just multiply by 480 480 equals and we end up with 3.34 volts so 3.34 volts. E3 equals. Okay. <coughs> so I total times R3. Again, same current, 6.95 milliamps. And the resistor is 2.1 kiloohms grab our current from memory, multiply it by 2.1 exponent 3 equals 14.60. So 14.60 volts and the voltage across resistor 4. Again total current times resistor 4 equals 6.95 milliamps times a very large resistor, 10 point, okay, maybe not very large, but <laughs> larger than the other resistors we have here. 10.3 <coughs> kilohms, and grab our current again from memory. Multiply it by 10.3 exponent 3 equals 71.6 3 volts 71.63 volts now it's a good thing good idea to do a check so we just add these all up plus and I'm actually just leaving this thing in like oh I'll change that so 10.43 plus 3.34 14.6 plus 71.63 equals hopefully around 100 and it's exactly 100 there you go now the only reason it's exactly 100 is because we carried lots of decimal places so at this point we can go to the next page and solve for so we've solved all for all our voltages we've got this 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 now we're just doing power so power and you can use either E times I or I squared times R. It's easier to just use voltage times current, so let's just do that. So power 1 is voltage 1, which is so E1 times I total. E1 is 10.43 volts. And our current 6.95 milliamps. So grab that current from memory again and multiply it by 10.43 equals 72.53 milliwatts. So 72.53 milliwatts. Power 2. So voltage 2 times the total current. And voltage 2 was 3.34 times our current 6.95 milliamps equals 3.34 times recall current 23.23 milliwatts 23.23 milliwatts power 3 again same formula 
Might as well. It's easier, right? And voltage 3. 14.6 times 6.95 milliamps. 14.6 times our current. 101.53 milliwatts. So 101.53 milliwatts. Now I'm noticing a change. 23, but it makes perfect sense. We have a higher voltage here. So power 4. Again, same formula. You don't have to use this one, but it's just easy. Okay, voltage. 71.63 volts times 6.95 milliamps equals 71.63 times, where's our current, equals 498.12 milliwatts. 498.12 milliwatts, and that's a 2. Now we add them all up. And I'm just going to drop the milliwatts part and just add up the numbers because they have all the same units. 72.53 plus 23.23 plus 101.53 plus 498.12 and hopefully I punched in all the right numbers equals 695.41 695.41 milliwatts now you should always do a check and hopefully we're right power total equals E total times I total E total is 100 volts which is a nice number times I total which is, oh, so perfect, 6.954 milliamps. So the answer is, for power total, move the decimal two places to the right, 695.4 milliwatts. Okay, that's pretty close, so we're good. So at this point, when you've done all of this, you can say, all right, if, I, if my powers match, and my voltages add up, I'm okay with this circuit. All right, so there you go. That uh, video was brought to you by Wise Guys, and I hope that you have a good day.